On 16th of October 2013, the Auditor-General tabled his audit report on the prevention and management of drug use in prisons. The Auditor-General provides assurance to Parliament on the accountability and performance of the Victorian public sector. The Audit Act 1994 defines the powers and responsibilities of the Auditor-General and the Victorian Auditor-General's Office. Under this Act, the Auditor-General conducts and reports on both financial audits and performance audits. The Auditor-General's mandate covers over 500 entities, including government departments, hospitals, local government, water corporations, police, emergency services, universities and superannuation schemes. This presentation is a summary of the report Prevention and Management of Drug Use in Prisons. To read the full report, please go to our website www.audit.vic.gov.au. Drug and alcohol misuse presents challenges for Victoria's criminal justice system, given a strong correlation between excessive drug use, criminal activity and reoffending. In 2012, for example, around 70% of prisoners reported using illicit drugs while 54% of prisoners reported problematic alcohol use in the 12 months before entering prison. Based on these patterns, many prisoners start their incarceration with drug use problems and, if not treated or diagnosed, this can lead to demand for drugs in prison, which in turn can lead to risks for prisoners, prison staff and the community. These risks include increased prison violence, occupational health and safety risks, as well as the potential for corruption and prisoners completing their sentence with untreated drug problems also increase the risk of reoffending. Drug use in prisons, particularly the sharing of syringes, can have adverse health impacts on prisoners through the transmission of blood-borne viruses. Prisoners already have poorer health than the general population, and this is most evident in the rates of hepatitis C, where between 23 and 47 per cent of prisoners are estimated to be infected, compared with around 1.4 per cent for the general population. The amount of drug use in Victoria's prisons is determined from the results of random urinalysis tests. Each week, 3% of prisoners in public prisons and 1.25% of prisoners in private prisons are randomly selected for urinalysis. As shown here, positive test results have ranged between 2 and 5% over the past 10 years. The current rate of positive tests is 4.34%, which has doubled the lowest rate achieved in 2008-09. To put the rises and falls into perspective, this figure shows that the rate of positive tests on a scale going up to 100% shows a stable trend over the 10 years. Urinalysis tests, both targeted and random, can also show the types of drugs that prisoners are using. As shown here, the most common drug detected is buprenorphine, which is an opioid substitute used to treat heroin addiction. Its spike can be attributed to its inclusion as a drug routinely tested for since 2008. Other drugs that urinalysis testing detects include amphetamines, opiates, benzodiazepines, which are a prescribed sedative, and cannabis. The objective of this audit was to assess how effectively and efficiently the Department of Justice has prevented the supply of, demand for, and the harm caused by drugs in prisons. This involved examining Corrections Victoria and Justice Health, both operational areas within the department. Corrections Victoria manages the prison system, including operating public prisons, managing the contracts of the two private prisons, and developing corrections strategy, policy and standards. Justice Health manages health services within the prison system, and their role also includes establishing policy and standards. Justice Health does not directly provide health services. These are outsourced to private providers. In addition to these two operational areas, the audit also examined statewide data for the 14 public and private prison facilities and also examined in detail three public prisons. These prisons were the Dame Phyllis Frost Centre, a maximum security women's prison, Durangilly Prison, which is a low security men's prison, and Manganeet Correctional Centre, which is a medium security men's prison. These prisons were selected to cover the three security classifications, men's and women's prisons, and also to include Manganeet, which has intensive treatment programs, including those for drugs and alcohol. The audit concluded that the drug controls in Victoria's prisons have been effective in preventing drugs from entering prisons and detecting them if they get past barrier controls. This is highlighted by the less than 5% of the prison population testing positive to drugs, despite the high and increasing number of prisoners entering prison, many of whom will have existing drug problems. The audit also concluded that prisoners with drug problems are identified and managed through a range of programs to address drug-taking behaviours and associated health issues. 
Our expectation was that these programs would have led to less drug use among prisoners inside prison and after they completed their sentence. However, it wasn't possible to determine this because the department hadn't undertaken adequate evaluations of its treatment programs. It also was not possible to determine whether its drug prevention and detection controls were as effective and efficient as they could be because they too hadn't been evaluated. While prison drug controls have resulted in relatively low rates of detection for illicit drug use, the department lacks an adequate performance framework, which means that it is unable to assess performance against drug supply, control, detection and deterrence objectives, or assure itself that it's mitigating drug-related risks as effectively and efficiently as it could. Having said that, the department's understanding of its drug-related risks was also weak. While the department used risk frameworks centrally and within its regions, prisons did not have documented risk management processes. Each prison managed day-to-day -day risks through standards and operating procedures. However, these did not account for prison-specific operational and strategic risks or tell prison management whether controls were effectively managing risks. Ultimately, the adequacy of the department's drug controls is influenced by its objective of managing a balanced prison system. This is a balance between humane prisoner management and the prevention and detection of drugs. In essence, you can have very tight drug controls, but this would mean severely curbing prisoner visits, which are an important part of prisoner rehabilitation, but also a big source of drugs entering prisons. Conversely, you can focus more on prisoner rehabilitation, but this may lead to more drugs entering the prison. While the department cites this balance as a key part of its drug prevention and detection activities, there is no auditable framework to determine what constitutes the right balance. Currently, it uses performance benchmarks for random urinalysis tests to assess the balance and adequacy of its drug controls. However, there are anomalies with these benchmarks, with differences across prisons and across prisons of the same classification. The reasons for the differences are unclear and this undermines the usefulness of this indicator as a proxy for adequacy and effectiveness. Despite the department's difficulty in demonstrating the effectiveness and efficiency of its drug prevention and detection controls, it was evident from our audit conduct that controls are in place and detecting drugs. For all prisons, prevention and detection controls are guided by minimum standards based on the security classification of the prison. Essentially, higher security prisons have more prevention and detection controls, reflecting the profile of the prisoners. Prisons have procedures to manage prison visitors, who represent a key vulnerability for the introduction of drugs, including registering the visit to enable a prior security assessment of the visitor, searches and strip searches following certain kinds of visits, and separating visitors and prisoners. Detection equipment and animals are also used, including walkthrough and portable ion scanners that can detect drug particles and drug detection dogs. Within prisons, drug detection dogs are used for cell and prisoner searches and one of the main detection controls is random and targeted urinalysis. Around 26,000 urinalysis tests were conducted in 2012-13 with around 6,500 random and 9,000 targeted. The rest of the tests were generally undertaken as part of drug treatment and sanction programs. To address risks around opioid drugs from treatment programs being trafficked within the prison, prisons have also implemented procedures to limit opportunities. These include searching prisoners pre and post dosage, observation, limiting the number of prisoners prescribed certain drugs and changing the form of the drug. The prompt identification of drug users is essential. All prisoners receive health assessments when they enter the prison system and when they transfer between prisons. This provides an opportunity to identify drug use, associated health problems, and whether the prisoner was receiving community-based treatment before sentencing. Prisons also provide a range of treatment and incentive programs to manage prisoner drug use. In terms of incentives, the identified drug user and drug-free incentive programs operate for prisoners who have been detected using drugs. In addition to a referral to alcohol and drug treatment, prisoners lose visitation privileges and have to undergo more frequent urinalysis testing. They can reduce the length of the sentence and resumption of contact visits by agreeing to a separate program of drug testing. Prisons also offer alcohol and other drug treatment programs and treatment programs to enable prisoners to start or continue addressing their opiate addictions. Given the high proportion of prisoners with bloodborne viruses associated with drug use, programs are available for the treatment of hepatitis C. However, uptake of the treatment is generally low because of the side effects of the treatment. Like the prevention and detection controls, a lack of evaluation means that the effectiveness of these programs remains uncertain, particularly for the longer-term management of drug problems. 
The audit made six recommendations focusing on performance reporting and evaluation, risk management, a framework for determining a balanced prison system, and reviewing benchmarks in light of this framework. The Department of Justice has accepted all the recommendations and, as its response in Appendix B of our report shows, has provided a time frame for implementing the recommendations. We will monitor the Department's progress in implementing the recommendations over the next two years. All our reports are available on our website. If you have any questions about this or other reports, or if you have anything else you would like to discuss with us, including ideas for future audit topics, please call us on 03 8601 7000 or contact us via our website.